Do you have moments in your mind where you're like, you know, what would this have meant to little Jonathan growing up in Quincy, Illinois? Very much. And sometimes that's actually another one of those feelings where sometimes I think if I felt that feeling all the way, I would just like be in a corner crying because I can't believe that I've been able to do this with my life. Did an outfit change for you? I know, I was just gonna say that. I like, thank you, you're giving me Mariah vibes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I am in love with uh, your fashion this season. And I was gonna get thank you that you. Hair, But now that I'm seeing you, I'm telling you that right now. Thanks, um, I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, so. Okay, I'm moving it closer to me. I need like cuter light, I'm sorry. I'm just getting yeah. comfortable. And I'm actually also just gonna move right here because it's gonna be cuter. There you go. Okay. I more natural light in my life. I'm sorry. Okay. <sighs> Get it. Kind of like a real journey trying to figure out the lighting situation. There you go. Oh, hi, Jonathan. Hi. <laughs> um, I um, I'm so glad that you've been such a big part of my life at this very moment between like queer eye, um, getting curious, and now I get to see you in like real life. <laughs> real Zoom life. In Zoom, in Zoom life, yeah. Um, well, I, I watched um, a lot of Getting Curious yesterday with my very good friend, psychologist friend, Lauren, who loves you. Um, and we just wanna thank you for modeling curiosity. First of all, like, thank you for modeling curiosity. I think as adults, we tend to lose our imagination and we just accept things for the way that they are without questioning the world around us. Like, why is something the way that it is, et cetera, et cetera. Is that what you felt going into the show? Well, I started getting curious, the podcast in 2015. I've always been someone who loves to learn and who loves to, I'm just a very curious person and I, clearly love talking. So the idea of like wanting to understand the world around me better has been something that's existed within me for like as long as I can remember. Um, so that was definitely something that I wanted the opportunity to break down like on the Netflix stage because it's a very big stage. And I wanted to bring a more like visual, um, multimedia, multifaceted uh, world in which the podcast, but as a TV show could live. So I'm just really excited that we got the opportunity and that Netflix believed in me enough that we, that I have this story to tell and that we can go explore the world together. So I'm just really excited that I have the opportunity and I hope everyone loves it. I'm excited for you. And you mentioned it's a big stage, which it is, which makes me want to ask you, is that why you were like, you know what, we are going to do an entire episode devoted to non-binary people and gender non-conforming people yes 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 i mean i you know being someone who is non-binary is something that i think i've been my entire life i only had language for it in these last few years but the amount of trans misogyny the amount of trans misogyny that i've had to endure and live through in my own life uh, pales in comparison to some of the trans misogyny that other people have had to go through within our community and within our trans community specifically. However, I wanted to take, I wanted to humanize us. And it's not only my job to do this, obviously, but I wanted to have a time where we could talk and be together and learn together and, um, and just have that humanity. Because I think so often we are um, portrayed in this like way that is just not human. It's only around like violence or this feeling of like, you know, trans people are coming for our way of life or trans people are coming for tradition or trans people are coming for sports or trans people are coming for public safety or whatever it is. And I wanted to show people that we are human and we are all sorts of different things that are not threatening and are actually very beautiful and amazing and are just as natural as the grass or rain. You know, we've been here forever. And I was really excited to give to get an opportunity to share that information. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, as we were watching it, there were so many moments where we were like mouth agape, like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Um, <laughs> like I was just, I, I, I wanted to tell you that I value it on a very high level. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, especially that you take your role as like a non-binary public person so seriously. Um, you know, there aren't a lot of non-binary public figures in the world, right? I mean, there are more, but there aren't a lot. Um, and you seem to be aware of that, would you say? Yeah. Yeah, using your, your uh, platform to uh, really, um, to, really uh, to, to educate people to some extent. Absolutely. I think that, you know, for me, being someone who is like 
very mercilessly bullied all throughout my like childhood and like formative like educational years i've always um been very moved by this thought of like if i could um make it easier for other people like me or like put a little bit of an end to other people's suffering um that would just be it would make my suffering more worth it and so i've always you know liked the idea of like using what i've learned to help make other people's lives easier um i love that you said that because my copy editor had a question for you actually and that's a perfect segue into it and she just wanted me to say that um her son loves you um oh. and her son is maybe 12 or 13 um and you know is questioning his gender his identity um so on that level on that note you know how do you feel when it's a kid who looks to you as a huge inspiration as they're sort of navigating their own um gender and identity in a, in a really tricky social media landscape um, where sometimes it's hard to figure out what I should be? It's a really good question. I mean, I think sometimes when I see like much younger children, like in my stand up comedy show, I'm just feel immediately guilty. I'm like, oh my God, I hope I don't traumatize them, honey, because we are going there tonight. Um, so <laughs> in that sense, it's like that way it can be a little bit harder. But I so often think about Margaret Cho because when I think about how do I want to live my life as a public figure? Because she is, I was introduced to her her work at a very young age. I was I think maybe like 10 or 11 when I first saw one of her specials on Comedy Central and she did not hold back. She was herself, she is herself. She's a full bodied version of herself. And look at how I turned out, I'm fine. So I just feel like I don't want to, I want to be myself. I don't want to totally um, limit like my art or my creativity thinking about like, oh my gosh, is this going to be too much for someone or is this going to whatever? I feel honored that people of any age would look to me and find more self-love, more self-acceptance, more comedy, more joy, um, more curiosity. So I think I really, I want to think about that because if I think about like, oh my gosh, like I'm um, a role model for like a lot of young people, I feel like, and, and even just success in general, if I thought about it too much, I think I would become really full of anxiety and like unsure of what to do and so i think in order for me to stay connected to myself and my own vision i have to like not think too too much about um the way that it's going to be received mm -hmm. yeah do you have moments in your mind where you're like you know what would this have meant to little jonathan growing up in quincy illinois very much and Sometimes that's actually another one of those feelings where sometimes I think if I felt that feeling all the way, I would just like be in a corner crying because I can't believe that I've been able to do this with my life. Um, but I do hope that other young people seeing me achieve what I've been able to achieve in my career won't find it so shocking when they achieve their dreams and when they get to do what they're going to come up and do. Because for me growing up, I felt like it was going to, it was unheard of. Um, I didn't think that I was ever like going to see someone like me, like, you know, be so successful and beloved and accepted and able to create their own projects. It's like, it really is such an honor. Um, and I, I want other people, especially young people, to look at me and think that they can do it too. Yeah. Oh, that's so lovely. I love hearing that. Um, I, uh, this is your first season on Queer Eye, um, I think, where you're identifying as non-binary, right? Well, I think I came out about being non-binary in 2019. I think that was just before we filmed season five, but I don't think I, I don't know if me talking about it in that season made it to air. Okay, got it. I just wondered, because like you are fully yourself on the season in a way that like I hadn't really realized before. I guess like you just seem so you're really embodying your whole self. And I wondered if you felt that way uh, or if you felt differently on this season. I mean, down to like aesthetically, fashion, all of that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just been such a um, fast four years you know I, I think like from shooting season one and two in atlanta in 2017 which is when we actually shot that and then season three and four we shot in 2018 um like you know really soon after the show had come out so it's like my life every single like you know season one and two we shot together season three and four together and then five was its own thing and then six was its own thing and so each one of those chunks i feel like i was in just a wholly different life situation every single time like just 
neck spraining differences in life situations. And so I do think that this season between being married and I think, you know, definitely this was the first season where I was public about my HIV status, um, public and just very public in all of the things. And so I think that that, that maybe did lead to just a, mo a more overall sense of ease. Yeah. Great. It really translates. I felt it. Um, okay. so who's on your dream guest star list for potential future episodes? Of I mean, once you do have Michelle Kwan, I don't know where else you're going to go from there. Um, like I kind of started with like the most major one ever. Um, but I mean, I feel like is Adele ever available? Beyonce, Michelle Obama, honey, like I'm shooting for the stars, but like, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, why not? The sky seems like your limit. Oprah. I hope. Oh my God, Oprah. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know if I can even have Oprah because I think I would literally do that for the whole 22 minutes. I'd watch it. Oh my I'd God, I love her so much. I love her so much. Watch anyway. Jonathan try to make it. That'll be the, the title of that episode. It's like, can Jonathan form words around <laughs> Oprah? Question <laughs> is the title of that episode. <laughs> um, I, I know, I know you in, in getting curious on your podcast, you, you tell people when you really love them, like Brandy Carlisle, I watched, I listened to that episode. Um, so I just need to tell you, I love you and I respect you so much and the work that you do. Uh, it means the world to me, my friend I was telling you about. So please just keep, keep at it because it is changing so many minds. All right. Thank you so much. Um, well, please, um, when the getting curious comes out well for now if you could just turn on the reminder on your netflix app just press that reminder and then when it comes out watch it because i don't think your screener counts so that would be a really good way that you could support me to get a season two honey so watch it through the end even if you just turn on and leave the room honey just yes you're watching the next episode okay <laughs> tell your mom tell your friends turn on your ipad you know, turn on every device just just to watch it please i want to do it again you know what i'm saying I want you to do it again. So you know what? I will do all the above. And I know my, I, you know, you know how my mom, my mom feels about you. I told you in the last interview, she loves you guys. So, you know, she'll be watching it on her own TV. So there we go. She, she's going to single-handedly get you that second season. Yes. Put on her <laughs> Facebook. Tell all of her friends. <laughs> well, you're thinking my mom has Facebook. She doesn't have Facebook. Oh, but... okay. Yeah. Maybe she should open one. She'll, she'll send a text thread to all her girlfriends. Yes. Text threads. It worked for me. All right. Thanks again. I really appreciate everything you do. Take care. Bye. Bye.